Hello, welcome again to our Monday at 2 p.m. podcast, Rebel Realty Group podcast with Kristen Rebel and Rebecca Johnson. All right, and we always want to mention our beautiful uh, videos from Brick City Photography out of Ocala. We love using them for our videos and our marketing for photos. And that's actually another one of our new listings out in High Springs. So it's on five acres, a pool home. And I think what makes it exciting for people is there's a shooting range there. Ah, <laughs> An outdoor I thought shooting maybe range. it was the garden that they oh, had. Oh, yeah. You can they grow a, a lot garden. of beautiful flowers. And the pole barns and the sheds. Right? I mean, it was Fruits a great little property. Yeah, so... All right. Um, well, let's start this Monday like we start every Monday with the Monday, Monday Market Report. <laughs> All right, so we're starting 2021 off strong. Um, the numbers so far are active listings, 74 active listings. That means from January 1st till um, about nine o'clock this morning, <laughs> we've had 74 new listings hit the market. I would Fantastic. bet there's more mm -hmm. um, if we looked right now. Pending sales, 101 pending sales since January 1st. Again, a lot of those are new construction that take a long time to close. Mm -hmm. so but that's that. quite a few sales in, mm -hmm. in just, um, what day are we on? The 11th. <laughs> oh, my, is this my baby's birth month? I can't remember when he was born. Um, <laughs> I think it's the 11th. Maybe it was the 13th. Do you remember? Uh, no. <laughs> it was a Tuesday. Anyways, he may or may not he may or may not be 19 months old today or in the next few days. So at least it's not like right on the year, but yeah. <laughs> Jamie, if you're watching, let me know. Um, all right, so close sales close. So, for the first 11 days of the year. So that means month. they were pinned in December or before, and they so have that's where closed they're closing now. The first through the 11th, right. uh, 43. And Susan Hicks at our office likes to brag that she was the first one to close in January at our office. So. I kind of think it was me. I was oh, the wait, first one to close. You were on that same one too. <laughs> we'll have to flip a coin to see who gets bragging rights. But uh, 43 closed sales so far this year in the first 11 days of Still the market. Still going strong. Exactly. I don't think we ever had a break. So this is like December, December, what would that be? Um, 30 or 42nd? Oh yeah, December 42nd, 2020. That's how it certainly feels sometimes. Yes. Um, so I was talking to an appraiser and he, we were talking about the numbers um, and he said December was one of his busiest months for requests that he's had uh, yeah. in years. We've talked about this a lot that last year we never had a really a break. Um, April through July is usually the biggest, or the, the biggest months, July, April and June being the biggest closed months. And they were really big months actually, but the months never went down. Usually there's like a little uptick and then a downtick all the way out. It was an uptick and just kept going. And We're so not complaining. this is not really a normal January because the normal January is after three or four months of kind of slower business, but nope. We're not complaining exactly, um, but we do know that um, our industry is has been going strong and busy and so, you know, understand we're, we've been under a lot of stress and sometimes with appraisals, you know, if you're a buyer or seller or even another realtor, if the appraisal, appraisals are taking a really long time, it's because like Rebecca just said, they are slammed. Yeah. We don't have enough appraisers in the industry. <laughs> I'll fight you for it, Susan. We can fight. Um, I, I, it's a play I'm, fight though. Yes. Play you fight. can rock, paper, scissors it. Nah, we're going to fist fight in the parking lot. You, do you know where we are? Susan, come meet me outside. I don't know. I wouldn't want to fight Susan. <laughs> I wouldn't either. <laughs> um, but yeah. anyways. So we are looking for listings uh, and buyers, of course, but if you have a home that you're thinking about listing, now is definitely the time to call us, talk to us, let us know where you're at, what you're thinking. We can go through everything from setting up staging um, to showing instructions and marketing and get your home sold. And we'll um, get those uh, beautiful photos and videos and your video will be here on this podcast for all to see because we are not only on Facebook Live, but we're also on YouTube and soon to be Periscope and then also on our website and blog. Very so. good. All right. All so right. that's your Monday market moment yeah. for January 11th, which may or may not be my babies. So as you, right, <laughs> as you all probably know, we are in Gainesville, Tampa, and actually now in St. Augustine. So we will be giving you some updates about all three markets, including really the Florida market in general. We do focus mostly in Gainesville, but we have a fun little story. So it's, you know, been, it's, 
Christmas is over. It's still winter. Gainesville, we're freezing. This is way too cold for me. But um, we, we've had a lot of friends go and see snow up in North Carolina, Tennessee, Georgia, and um, kind of made Rebecca kind of look through old St. Augustine pictures. And she pulled up this old picture of St. Augustine back in 1951 where it snowed. Yep. Now that was, and there's the more. There's the fort. Yeah, the you fort can see in the background. There. Right? <laughs> Kai, no, we hope they're not real, but <laughs> they might be. Um, right. <laughs> so the last time it snowed in St. Augustine was not 51, but this was a really big highlight. They have a lot of great pictures. Plus the old cars are super cool. How and really cool just that? seeing that fort in the background <laughs> is really kind of awesome. And that's a lot of snow. So you're kind of technically from Florida, not really, but you've lived here most you of your life. You all have accepted me. Right. I moved so here when are, I was three. You're a Floridian, right, by heart. Um, and so I'm, I mean, I'm an ACR at Gainesvilleian. I've moved away but came back. Can you tell everybody what the, ACR for those that don't Alachua know? Alachua County resident, it's like for life. Like So for those of us from the Tampa Bay we area, remember, we're 813 area code, you know. Right, we're 352. They call themselves ACRs yes. here. Some weirdos have the 352 tattooed, tattooed on them. We do I that do too. We do our, our county and with our weirdos. 813. Well, anyways, um, I do remember in the 80s, I'm not going to tell you what age I was then, um, but the there was snow. I don't think it was like this thick, but there was a lot of snow. It's the first time it ever snowed in Gainesville that I knew of, because I believe in this 50s, it snowed also in Gainesville. You don't remember? Yeah, I, I don't remember the 50s. <laughs> <laughs> not very well at all. Uh, I don't either. <laughs> um, I actually sent this to somebody that was a, like a lifelong resident. Um, he like, it was probably there. there in the 50s. Yes. <laughs> and um, and yeah. he said he did, he was not aware that it had snowed in the 50s in St. Augustine. Are we sure that's not sand? Because they have really beautiful white sand there. That could be. It's hard <laughs> to tell. It is a black and white photo. Maybe it was more like a windstorm that came in and right. blew all the sand everywhere. <laughs> um, yeah. But it's pretty incredible. I can tell you the last couple weekends over there with the nor'easters, um, it felt like it's going to snow to yes. me. I mean, anything below... Um, you know, 65 feels like it could snow at any moment. I mean, right now it's kind of warm, but this nice. morning and yesterday, oh, I was out at Grand Oaks and yesterday was freezing. It's hard I to snow. not handle that, right? It's hard to be excited so about it. Do you remember the when there were snow flurries like four or five years ago when we yes. were up in High in Springs? In High Springs, we all had video. Yeah. It was great yeah. to watch it for that like 20 minutes. So have you taken your kids to see snow yet? Um... Hmm, I could definitely confirm the baby has not seen snow. Let me think on the other two. Um, yes, they saw okay. snow in Asheville one Christmas. Um, it wasn't enough to like be sticky to the ground. Oh, I know, I'm went. the one that goes like I thought once. you went last year for Asheville. Mm, no, maybe no. I was pregnant. I don't really remember. Okay. Time flies. When yeah, because I went Asheville before you went a year or two before, and we chased the snow, but it really, like, as we were leaving, it was snowing, and we had to say bye. It was so. perfect. We had stayed one night there, and mm -hmm. then um, we were headed to, to the Highlands, North Carolina area, and right. it snowed for a little bit. It was sticky. Um, I only went to Asheville because everybody said it's it's like what Gainesville models itself yeah. off mm -hmm. of. And um, and it was okay, kind of on the way. Yeah. Yep. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And we went to that presentation all about revitalizing downtown, yeah. which I hope continues. <laughs> um, and uh, but yeah, we saw a little bit of snow, and it satisfied the kids. Now they want to go like actually play in snow. Yeah. I don't know why. I mean, I'm looking at this Freezing. picture with the cars. In the cold, we pray for the <laughs> Yes, we do. <laughs> that is really peculiar to me. And it's something that keeps me feeling safe, Kai, just to throw out there. Um, I will never live in South Florida because I think it's the Discovery Channel has a show where um, people hunt down pythons in the Everglades. Yes. I will never live Thank where you, there are Thank you, Hurricane wild Andrew, pythons. for releasing the pythons in the yeah. bubbles. Yeah. Yeah. No, thank you. So I'll always live in the north part of Florida where it apparently too can cold. snow. It's so. too cold for the iguanas and too cold for the pythons and boas. But yeah, so I saw that picture. There's a there's a group in Gainesville. I think it's called St. Augustine News. And they find old photos and they're always posting them. And I thought this was so cool and had to bring it in well, and share. Plus, because we've got friends, you know, who were able to visit and hit the, you know, either the slopes or the snow this year and last year. And, you know, we wanted some snow, but not really. We don't really want snow, but we love to look at You can keep so. your snow. But post pictures. I like living vicariously yeah. through you. I'll go to the beach, and you can live vicariously through me.
So I don't know, uh, I know that a lot of people, um, this actually also brings up a couple things. A lot of people from Gainesville being ACR for life, I know this. Most people have like a, not most people, but a lot of them have a second home up in, you mentioned Highlands, my family did, your family does, Highlands, Cashers area of North Carolina. But the other main second home place that people have is in St. Augustine. So I knew growing up, a lot of my friends had family or friends that had a second home, condo, house, beach house, and in St. Augustine. I think it's because it's you know an hour and 45 minutes away, super close. We are not a coastal town, so we don't have to worry about the coastal insurance. So anyone moving in to Gainesville from the coast, it loves our insurance costs, our homeowner's insurance costs, even if we have heightened ones due to certain events. But um, so a lot of them are in St. Augustine. So you've got a little bit of news for us for St. Augustine. Yes, and we'll hit a little bit of Tampa of what's coming to mm -hmm. Tampa in a little bit uh, later in the show. So St. Augustine, um, this piqued my attention selfishly, sorry. So we can pull um, up the next slide. Yeah, uh, uh, about the Sebastian Inland Harbor. Um, so is this named after your Sebastian? It might be. Or did you no. name Sebastian after St. Augustine? <laughs> after the river. So, but yeah, I mean, hey, this little dude is pretty cool. I mean, he's got a winery, a river, and now an inland harbor. So go. this was a, a project that's been going through planning and zoning up there in St. Augustine. And if you're familiar with where the winery is, and you can actually see it in the picture, it's that two-story mm -hmm. building over there, um, you can see what's coming to St. Augustine. And if you've been there during COVID, you'll completely appreciate this, I think, because there's very little parking, uh, things are packed, it's, you know, they need some more space. So what they're looking at doing is, um, they're looking at doing about 165 apartments, which is great for Flagler and mm -hmm. in, in that area. Um, they're looking at doing about 167 um, rooms in a hotel. Yeah. Um, they're gonna have 65 boat slips, two parking garages, um, 27,000 square feet of retail space, which you've ever been to St. Augustine, um, there's not enough places Probably to shop. Needs that, right? Yeah, because can you can. Can bring a TJ Maxx there? <laughs> <laughs> Probably not to that area, but they do need one. I agree. So anybody in St. Augustine that's watching, or somebody from <laughs> TJ Maxx, we need one over there. Um, it's just not the same without you. So yeah, um, along with those, um, you know, spaces are going to have like a spa complex and uh, restaurant lounge, things like that. So. And I think it's great because they're not really utilizing that area. I went over to um, the St. Augustine Fish Camp a couple weeks and weekends mm -hmm. ago, which was a beautiful um, building, and uh, and it comes right down on the water, and it's right there next to them, kind of off of King Street and let's see, how do you pronounce Riviera. it, Riviera, mm -hmm. and. Um, so, I, I mean, there was a lot of dead space, and it was funny because we were literally just talking about it, and then about a week later, an article appeared in the paper <laughs> saying that was what was going to go in there, and I just, I think it's great. I'm excited. I know there's mixed reviews out there in St. Augustine. Yes. Uh, we'd always. love to hear your opinion. Always. You can always drop in the comments, and we're happy to discuss with you, um, you know, what, what your thoughts are, but I, I'm, you know, very interested in people being able to open businesses and run them and keeping it in that local feel and, and they are doing that it's that. vacant they're not taking anything right. down um and i think it would be a great use of this space and this harbor right here sorry so, winery yeah. you're going to lose some of your parking <laughs> <laughs> yeah but they really want to do that garage so that there's oh parking. imagine how many and more the people city wants come. to have some metered parking so that they can make some money off of it i'm I mean, all that's about that is. you need parking <laughs> because i can tell you i still haven't seen the lights to be able to walk the streets i've seen it from boat i've seen it from my air you know aerial photos but i would like to be able to walk the street and enjoy the lights but I just can never get parking so yeah anyway so we'll have some things about Tampa later I don't think we have any slides but what we do have about Gainesville is I'm not sure if this was named after our producer Elio they spelled it wrong we're gonna have to call them and tell them you spelled it wrong on the Change sign. the sign it's E-L-I-O right not LAO. <laughs> I don't know if it's it said LAO or LEO. We all say LEO here. But it's the new hotel that's off of 16th and 13th, kind of. Um, uh, kind of in that little area where there's the VA hospital and then parts of the hospital. The hospital's over off of Archer Road, but then there's that 16th Avenue. It is gorgeous. And it was actually created a little more for the families of patients at Shands, so it's kind of a, it's affordable for them and um, they currently right now they'll get free um, parking and 
you know, actually have, you know, you can just go in and they'll take your car off for you and it's free. So you don't have to pay anything, which is really nice. So you don't have to park at Shands, um, although that's free also. But this is just an extra space because, I mean, I, I will get into it. I, I'm actually a cancer survivor and went to Shands. Now I'm from here, so I didn't have to worry about that. But I met a lot of people who are from out of the area. So if you're not local to Gainesville, and that was most people, think about it. We have literally the best hospital in Southeast in the southeast and especially Florida. So people were coming from all over and they were displaced, you know, so they'd have to stay in hotels and there's there were a couple little spots where you could stay but the, there was never enough space. So the hospital did a really great job getting this together so that you could and I think they have some of these rooms set aside for the families at a at a nice cost. Yet it's near University of Florida, so it's also this beautiful hotel for, you know, travelers coming in and needing to be near UF. I mean, yes, it's going to be huge for, you know, football season and um, basketball season when people come in. But really, they want to save a lot of space, yes, for <laughs> Michelle. She's writing a blog about it. It will be posted come fr um, Friday. But it's affordable luxury, super modern, amazing restaurant. I've heard great reviews so about the cocktail I went, bar. Yeah, so we went to the restaurant this weekend on Friday night, date night. And um, Covey... Um, it's the Covey Kitchen and Cocktails, and a real cute spot. What I do have to say, there was a, there's an outside seating, which you can see in the picture there. Way too cold for outside on Friday night. But you can overlook the man-made pond and the fountains, so it's a really beautiful um, sight. You know, you're not looking at the city. You're looking at this, like, natural space, which is beautiful. Um, inside, they probably should turn down the lights a little bit because you could t see too many people when you're eating. Um, it has a limited menu. Um, a, it's like Southern fare mixed a little fancier Southern fare. Um, so, you know, beet salad, which was actually delicious. I love beets. Yeah. And so there was um, a salmon dish with a lot of things that I can't even say, but that was pretty good. And um, they actually had banh mi, so you probably should oh. tell Troy. And so a little bit of a mix of like sandwiches and, um, you know, dinner foods and then appetizers. And then they have this great, beautiful cocktail bar. So we didn't sit at the bar. We sat at one of the tables. But there were a couple of people there, and you could tell it's going to be a hot spot eventually for at least cocktails because it's really beautiful as long as they turn down the lights a little. Need a little more romantic mm -hmm. atmosphere but in It's there. one of those where you can watch the chefs, the chefs cook, hmm. you know, if you're sitting at the right table. So... Um, we sat near the window so we could look outside. It was dark, but it was an absolutely beautiful sight. And they have really nice lighting outside so you can, you know, view out there. So I would definitely take, um, you know, take a chance to go to a new restaurant and check it out. And we want to thank um, photographer Marston Photography for these photos. These are personal photos from her. And we appreciate it that you let us use them on our podcast. So thank you. We're going to take a break now. We'll come back in about a minute. My name is Jackie Mercier and I represent Team Kristen and Rebecca at Rebel Realty Group. Like me, I've been a realtor for 18 years, but I was new to the area and being on their team helped me learn the area more. The value you've brought to my business is just the accessibility to Kristen and Rebecca. We have morning huddles three days a week, we have labs, we have Zoom calls, we have conferences, we have a brain trust on Facebook, and any question we may have is answered in a very timely manner. They're just very accessible, they're very knowledgeable. We are a big family and we are friends as well as business colleagues. If you want to succeed in real estate, come join Team Kristen and Rebecca. Hey, we're back. Thank you for sticking with us or joining in now for the Rebel Realty Group podcast with Kristen and Rebecca. We right now, our second segment is sponsored by Johan Maldonado, the JNP Florida Handyman Services LLC. You can contact him for services of any handyman work at services at jpfloridahandyman.com. We'll get that up there on the next one. But um, hopefully if you need any home repairs, he's the one to call, the one to email. So um, we have his information up and we'll get up the contact information with him soon. So um, like we said, we were going to talk a little bit about Tampa. We don't have any slides about Tampa, but what's happening in Tampa, your hometown. Yay! 
Okay, so yes, yeah, so I did want to talk about this. Um, January in Tampa is typically a big month, and we'll probably get some slides as we go forward because I believe we have, and I don't know the correct term for it, so if she's watching, maybe she'll let us know, but she is one of the people who gets to be on some of the pirate ships. So, uh, oops, I gave it away. So Gasparilla, it's a huge thing in Tampa Bay um, and a lot of areas, and if you don't know about it, shame on you, you should know about it because it's amazing. Um, but our office down in Tampa is, is right there off of Tampa Street, so they get to enjoy some of the festivities. Um, the whole town is, you know, invaded by pirates. Um, so it's typically, it's, it has events that run all month in January, uh, from marathons to kids runs to parades, nighttime, like daytime. Music, things like yeah, that. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. So they actually have moved it to April 17th. I'm okay. reading my notes. Sorry. Is it just one down. day or one weekend? Um, well, so it, that's the main event from okay. what I understand because they're trying to get more preparations in place with COVID-19 going on, probably hoping that more people are vaccinated and, and you know, maybe we, we won't have so many issues in terms of that. Um, let's see. Uh, Super Bowl 55, I don't, I'm going to be honest, Lisa, I don't know, is that this year's Super Bowl? <laughs> um, I think that is, I don't know. I just, I don't know, but um, it is home to Super Bowl 55. Oh, this February 7th. So congratulations, whoever's going to the Super Bowl. If we know who that is, if you know who it is, drop it in the comments and let us know. Um, <laughs> I'm terrible at sports, guys. I'm sorry. But Gasparilla. We look like we're on exciting. a sports show, but we know nothing about sports. Yeah, I mean, we know some, know. but not a lot. Um, I think I was asked yesterday if the national championship was this week, and I'm like, what national championship? <laughs> Apparently, if the Gators aren't playing, I just don't know. Any so, okay, well, let's get back to Gasparilla <laughs> since we know nothing about what's going on sports-wise. <laughs> so you're from Tampa. So have you ever done Gasparilla? Of course. Okay, so did you dress up like a pirate or a winch or? I'll never tell. I'll never and it tell. Was the day before, it was long before cell phones were so prevalent. Um, so you don't have a selfie or any get my pictures to post up? <laughs> the flip phone. It'll be blurry. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, um, yeah, everybody that lives in Tampa, I think, okay. um, partakes in Gasparilla in some ways. I have not taken the kids. I know that there is a kids is section of Gasparilla. There is. Right. They have a kids parade, um, oh. family friendly. I have a lot of friends that still go to that and participate in that. That is a shame on me, and I'll be honest, it's because I live in Gainesville and Tampa. Um, just to drive down there with the kids for the day, it seems exhausting. And anytime we do go, um, we end up you know, visiting with everybody we know in a 48 hour period. And that's, um, that's hard too. Mm. So, uh, but Gasparilla is a lot of fun, uh, since it's in April, which just has so happens to be the best month of the year. Um, said the tourist to the Aries, <laughs> um, <laughs> maybe we'll get to go April. and, uh, I the know. April girls, right? <laughs> like half the office is April. So, you so know. is Gasparilla anything like Mardi Gras? Like, is it the Florida Mardi Gras? It's a classier Mardi Gras, if you Classy ask me. Classier Mardi Gras? I don't know. Have you been to Mardi Gras? Um, <laughs> Anything is classier than yeah, Mardi Gras. Yeah, just about. <laughs> um, I mean, there are beads. There are festivities. There are things that are more adult-themed. So, yes, sure. there are a lot of components. Well, you talked about parade or, you know, the parades, and I yeah. know there's a lot of them. It's, um, in you know what I think Mardi, Mardi Gras, Gras might have that Gasparilla doesn't is the food. Jazz music. Oh, yeah, yeah the oh, food. Jazz music, but we have rum and pirate you know, swagger. There we so, go. okay. Um, <laughs> Speak like a pirate. Arr. Yes, our matey. So, um, who knows? Maybe, maybe you'll see the rebel team down there. Um, yeah. As we get closer, we'll talk a little bit more about it. I know another thing, and this is super like semi nerdy of me, but the Kumquat Festival goes on in Dade City okay. every um, year, uh, the last weekend in January as well. So, if and you're so done, that's definitely in, going on still. Yeah, I mean, okay. everything I've seen says yes. So, if you have heard otherwise, let us know. But that's in Dade City um, and should be a good time if you like kumquats. Do you eat kumquats? Right. Of course. Do you eat them uh, eat whole them. or do you peel them? Um, I've done both, but okay. I prefer to peel them, truthfully. Okay. I just, I've I seen know. people eat them both ways and mm -hmm. I didn't know there was a second way to eat them. I don't know. I mostly peel them all, or just Me too. Eat in, yeah. <laughs> I don't really like the skin, but yeah, they can be eaten that way as long as they're clean. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, that's all true. All right. Well, Tampa's a cool place to be, and St. Pete as well. So that all sounds like fun. I've never done Gasparilla. You keep at telling me about it, but it's always an odd time of year. I can't believe we've known so each other for 15 April, years and never have right, gone. Since April is the best month of the year, absolutely. Um, and it's going to be held in April this year. Maybe we'll go. 
we have to go down. You know, all of 2020, we really didn't get to visit our our agents over in Tampa just with, you know, COVID, they stayed home. We didn't really have an office to go to. So this year, hopefully, we'll be able to go back. And <laughs> Thank you, Duffy. <laughs> Thanks, Duffy. Keep I, when I first read that, I'm like, on, what playoffs? What are they talking right, about? But I get it, football. Super Bowl. On the sports. 55. Thank you. F 55, you said. Okay. <laughs> Super Bowl 55 is We're coming so in terrible. February. <laughs> well, let's talk about what we do know about. I do. Homes, home decor, right? <laughs> trends, the latest trends of 2021. All right, um, so this was from msn.com. Yes. So this is what they think, which I, I kind of agree with these. some and kind of don't. Um, so I actually like this, and I spent a good portion of my weekend doing this, designing for organization. Um, Which so, all came from really Marie Kondo. I know. Right. You well, know. you know what? When I was cleaning out the five bags of clothes that does I got rid of this week. bring me joy or not? I think it's a great way to live. It I does. Mean, this if will I, help with any sort of, you know, cluttering that you have or... If you are, you know, slightly on the verge of crazy and, you know, don't ever throw anything out. That's well, I feel. that's not why you're crazy, but <laughs> <laughs> that's how I feel sometimes. So, yeah, so it's really, I mean, I love the Marie Kondo way of, you know, does this bring you joy? And what I was doing last year, we talked about this, I think on the podcast in the very beginning, is flipping your hangers around at the beginning of the year. Oh, and by the middle of the year, this. if you have never flipped it around, that means you haven't worn it, you can get rid of it. See, now, but I, I have can't a problem subscribe. with that. Okay, what's your problem? Because I have on? this adorable pink jacket that I absolutely love. It's silk, it's thin. I didn't really wear it last year, but I know I'm not going to throw that thing away. That thing, I mean, it's like beautiful. It's a really nice style. It matches everything, or it doesn't match everything, but it matches things, and it's not something you wear all the time. Right, I agree with you because there are some things like I might skip a year on certain things and right. then bring it out the next year so that it doesn't look like it's like um, dust. Oh, <laughs> it's like crazy. I thought you were pinching heads over there. <laughs> um, anyways, some kids. So, in the designing for organization is a big thing, and that really comes out of sort of Scandinavian, you know, design. Um, and I think the minimalist ideas really is hitting us because, you know, we've got to stay clean. Everybody's having to clean everything. There's not as many people, you know, hosting huge parties, so you're not holding on to a lot of stuff. I think um, also. You know, this Japanese style, minimalist style, the Japanese and Scandinavian styles coming in. Marie Kondo is really big. I mean, I really do think, you know, with uh, people staying at home, they need this organization. So it really makes sense. It was already becoming big, but it's even bigger now. And I know, like, the new term is, like, Japandi. Oh, so it's that. kind of, yeah, it's sort of really new. And I think that's that's what they were getting into with the, the biggest trends is this you know Japanese form of minimalism and Scandinavian form of minimalism? You know that IKEA look is very you know minimalist and smooth yeah. and easy and, and always been trendy. It's even trendier now. So well, I love this closet. Lots of I cute, love the yeah, wallpaper I love that's the happening wallpaper. over there. <laughs> yeah, actually those look like blinds almost. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, um, which are really cute. But yes, I mean the little baskets and I don't know some of those design shows. We talked about the two girls that are like kind of like us. Yes. I haven't seen it since then. So what was I it called? I haven't either. I was just trying to remember. But they do this also. They go in and help design with these sort of wall or closet systems, these wooden closet systems. There's also a couple other closet systems that aren't wood like this. I like how they're light blue. I you do know, too. Most of the time they're white. So you can really, you know, design your your closets, pantries, everything, and pick colors that bring you joy, you know, and really make it look cute. So they don't even, you don't even need doors for this. So, and it looks really nice. You could walk in and this doesn't look like a mess. Now, how many people can keep it like this? I do a pretty good job on keeping it, um, I, but my clothes are my by shoes colors. shoes get kind of, yeah. My shoes get crazy, because, I know. do have by colors, I have, we have by like short sleeve, no, well, no sleeve, short sleeve, you know, long sleeve, and then I have a whole dress section. Um, but yeah, I think that um, yeah, I my think shoes you can keep are it what organized. gets a little my crazy. My shoes are the only thing. Because I have, I have a lot of shoes with. up too high, and so when I take them down, boots, like this is boot season, so I bring the boots down, and they're kind of out, but then when boot season goes away, all the boots go back up, you know, mm -hmm. so. But I think, you know, once you design and start taking away too much clutter, it's a cleaner lifestyle, it's a simpler lifestyle, and it makes it a lot easier. So I love this. This is Kristen approved. So we give it thumbs is it up. Rebecca approved. It's 
Thumbs right. up. Designing for organization. What's the next one? Aesthetically pleasing home offices, which I'm going to say I'm a big fan of anything that's aesthetically, aesthetically pleasing. Aesthetically pleasing, right. I mean, that's a, that's a give, you know, go-to. So, I mean, I like it. I really love the natural woods right now. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I know there are people who don't like that. I just I was never a fan of like the cherries and the rich mahogany. I mean that was nineteen nineties. Yeah. We're, we're finally getting away from the nineties. Still meet people that like that stuff, mm -hmm. and it's just not my style. And I don't have anything against yours. Although I like stark white, but yes, too. this is nice. I remember last year it was really popular to bring a bunch of different finishes together. Yes. So wood and then plants and you know I think they're doing that. So metals they're with doing wood. That. You've got yeah. the metal. Um, I think that's. Stayed plants with us. Yeah. You've got the plants up front, the live plants, and then you've got the metal in the back. Scandinavian minimalist. Yeah, there you go. Look to it as well. Um, and I think it's like hybrid rooms are happening because of needing to have this home office. So we've talked about that before. Like your closet might become your office space, and so they're really trying to again aesthetically pleasing home office. They're bringing. You're putting offices in different sections. Hopefully it's not your dining room table anymore, and now it's a little section of your house that you've created into your home office because most people are working from home. I'm just going to point out that this person is not working that much from home because no, they have some not. high maintenance plants in this picture. <laughs> um, that, so I know they're spending time uh, fussing with them. So just going to throw that out there. Whoever employed this person that took this picture, um, right. they, they're not working, unless they're fake, which I can't tell from the picture. They could be. <laughs> So that's that's my other two cents, but I give this one well, a thumbs up. So one thing that we're missing on these is something called the shelfie, and it's a new term that people are using. Oh, Do you know what know. a shelfie is? No. The, the, the word used to be tchotchke. I'm not a <laughs> Which is one of my favorite words, because what a crazy what word. Are, what if tchotchkes. plants are the new tchotchkes? I bet you, well, at least you know our house has, you know, shelfie plants. They're shelfie plants. So it's basically cute little, you know, decor that you fill your house with. Although that doesn't really go with minimalism unless you're minimizing your shelfies or your tchotchkes. I don't have a lot of tchotchkes, but I have a lot of, a lot of photos plants. and a <laughs> lot of plants. And I can tell you that uh, when I was caring for them all over the weekend, I was like, Ugh, why do yeah. I keep propagating? I try to get uh, plants that you don't have to water a lot. Mm -hmm. So that they can just sit there and love, and I don't have to water them. I love those kind because I over, I tend to overwater, so I have to, yeah, a yes. single person's closet. Susan, we oh. only saw half the closet. That's all. Yes, that's my your half, my half. <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> but yes, I mean, so tchotchkes, the plants, you know, the shelfies. I think that's funny. I think a lot of people, you know, remember when Instagram came out and then you could take your pictures from Instagram and put them all over your walls. Oh yeah, I the mixed that's style of things. That. Mm -hmm. oh, that could be. Hmm. I don't see that here, but I think that's still probably pretty popular. And so then the next one is bathroom the sanctuary. Bathroom sanctuary. I'm gonna be honest. This one doesn't do anything for me um, because I have three sanctuary. kids. There is no sanctuary when you have three children, <laughs> unless you leave okay. the house without them. So I totally have to tell a story. So. Okay. I, I never really cared for bathtubs. I'm a shower girl. I am just too busy to have tubs. Well, we bought this joiner house, you know, where we live now for a year and a half, and it had a hu it has a huge tub. So yeah, we all take tubs in it, and we get bath bombs. And for this Christmas, I get a box, and it's from just some rando place, and it says Kristen Rebell on it. So I open it thinking it's one of my mini Amazon Christmas purchases for myself. Um, <laughs> So I'm like, oh, what is this? I open it, and it's rainbow bath bombs. They're little clouds with a little rainbow, like, you know, the Roy G. Biv rainbow on it. And we had about five of them, and we're like, who bath bombed us? No, or who bath bombed me? I mean, it wasn't the bad, you know. It wasn't like a glitter bomb. I've had a glitter bomb, but that was my best friend trying to mess with me. So <laughs> those are fun, but they're Don't a send total that stuff mess. to the office, Holly. <laughs> send that to her house. <laughs> But I have no idea. I called and texted the normals, but I have no idea. It's great. I love it. We all love bath bombs. We love our tub. And last night I did the the rainbow bomb. And it was so cool because it's a little cloud and it just falls along in your bathtub and sets out a little rainbow. Oh, that's cool. And then by the end of it, your, your bath is either like purpley or blue. Oh. And I just, you know, laid in there and rested and... I it was great. One, so I'm totally a, bath, a bathtub girl now. <laughs> Every once in a while, I love taking a nice hot bath. It was freezing, so that was the only way I could get warm. And we do now have a hot tub, but it wasn't warm enough. 
Oh, so congratulations, I can see, Susan. Right? I can see this happening. I think a lot of people are doing those really cute tubs now that are not really claw foot, you know, but they're but the there's single a basin. Yeah. Right. And I'm seeing that a lot, like the ones that are inside the shower. You have a huge shower and then tub inside a shower. Um, mine is the old 1991 version, but I don't want to get rid of it because it's huge and it's actually quite comfortable. These are not as big, but I think a lot of people are focusing around this bathroom sanctuary because they ha they're staying at home. They have a little more time. I think people are stressed out. Stressed out. They need it, right? <laughs> I mean, we have candles around, so if we want to put the candles on, we'll put a little music on. I did use mine while pregnant, but I, I, I can't now because the baby just can't yeah. be without me. He well, showers we have, with me. He sleeps with me. We have to lock me. the cat out because the cat will jump in the, <laughs> in the tub with us. With me. Does it like the water? Yes. She'll go out to the pool and jump in the pool. <laughs> I have your no idea. Is I, this is the weirdest cat ever. And Maybe she loves your the cat, pool. have you asked her, does she identify as a dog? Yes. Okay. Yes. That could be. She wants to be a dog. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you give this one a thumbs up. I mean, mainly because I get it. You know, I think, like you said, people are stressed. They have these really cute single basin tubs and they want to, whether they use them or not, they're decorating them with this like, you know, spa style look. So I think that's really cute. I, I wouldn't, too. I mean, do I really need that? No, I like the... I like the little candle nearby. I like a little plant. I have one of my prayer plants there. Doesn't need to be watered too much. Doesn't need a lot of sun. Love it. So perfect. It's kind of like a one thumbs up. I'm giving it a eh, okay. If you've All got right. it, cool for you. I wouldn't <laughs> spend money on it. Um, not for me. But, all right, so. We have um, one more little tidbit. Oh, yes. So in the Florida Realtor Magazine, oh, yes. you I found this really this. cute little article, which I had read, but I didn't think, hey, let me share it with Rebecca. This is great. We'll have to um, share this with you all. So basically, I'm just going to read this line. This is for people who are moving into Florida for the first time and have no idea what kind of crazy animals we have. Right. Out-of-state buyers worried about Florida's unusual creatures. So I don't think about this as a Floridian. No. Um, apparently, alligators are scary to people, um, but the birds of a feather were my favorite. Okay. So um, well, alligators. So they're no, they're normal. They're we dinosaurs. Live in they're living. They're dinosaurs. everywhere. So I will tell you again, ACR. This is ACR story. I am half Cuban. My family is a lot of my family is still in Spain. And when they would come over, it's kind of like when you're visiting another country, you're going to go visit their natural animals. We took every Spaniard, Italian, you know, Portuguese that would visit us to Lake Alice for them to see um, alligators up front in person. And they were in awe of these things that we see daily. And we're just like, why is this so unique? Yeah, but it's I because never that. alligators are really only in South Florida. I mean, not South Florida, South, but it's, you know, the Southern, southern states, states, so Louisiana, you know, Florida mainly. So they were just shocked and in awe of it. You know what else they were in awe of? What? Squirrels. <laughs> you know we have ginormous squirrels? Yes, we do. We, we have do. squirrels the size of, ra of rat or the big rats and then um, cats. So I always think it's funny that they're scared of alligators. I mean, I get it. They can be scary. And if you, every, every Floridian well, yeah, just knows you have to zig and then zag. If I didn't understand. We're all trained to uh, play it sports. Well, hey, look. My grandma said it works. My dad did too, um. just to make me run. <laughs> yeah, we'd practice in the yard. Zigzag. We zig, had a gator zag. in our neighborhood growing up, in my dad's neighborhood, Hamilton Heights. My grandparents did too. And so he would make me zigzag. Yeah. But then he said, you can't keep zigzagging because it will eventually go down, you know, run that line. So then you have to like run in circles. And I think it was just to get my energy out. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what would scare me is, I mean, if I think about it, the North has like big bears, bobcats, mm -hmm. copperheads. Well, we have Florida panthers. Well, I've well, never seen one. Northern so. panhandle <laughs> sort of area has copperheads. We do have moccasins. Yes. We do have rattlesnakes. We do have pygmy and timber and... All right. Uh, so the snakes scare me, but the, but the alligators don't bother me so much. Neither. Yeah. Um, the one that I thought was funny, because we actually have had experience with this, uh, peacocks. Or any of those running, I can't really fly, huge They're animals. big. They're big. Birds. They're way bigger than you think they we are. We both have like odd fears of birds. I love to look at birds and like go out and search for birds, but I don't like birds near me because of Alfred Hitchcock. Thank you. Mine is more, um, we, we took that no, birds listing. are crazy, because birds are crazy. We took a no, listing. You know what's worse what? than peacocks? Wild turkeys. Oh, yeah, wild turkeys are really bad. <laughs> Geese. Oh, yeah, those things are mean. So, 
but we did we have a listing with an archer and there were like 12 peacocks in the neighborhood well she told us about them but i didn't really get the gist of it until um i had really to go good. get the lockbox and she used to tell us if they get around be careful because they're mean i'm like oh, okay whatever so yeah. i get out of my car and they i'm like chase you. no all the peacocks front door. yep no peacocks go up there noises. get my lockbox yeah. I turn around and that bad boy is right there. I was like, oh. And they're oh at like God. our height because oh, yeah, they're only they're, five two, five three. Yes, they're tall. And nobody tells you that peacocks are tall. I just think it's, you know, like a small bird. Yeah. Anyways, nope, he's tall. He's staring me in the eye and I like back away slowly and I'm like, stay where you are. I like this lockbox. I don't want to lose it to throw at you. And then I just ran and got in the car. And then I don't know where he went, but I turned around and I swear to you, he wasn't on the porch anymore. So I got really nervous, checked the back seat. He wasn't there. So well, they was so glad when that closed. Yeah. If you have two peacocks, they will end up having 12 peacocks. So be careful with nah. that. And they'll be all around. Yeah. They'll, they'll run all around. <laughs> um, but if you are moving to Florida, you really just have to know that, you know, Stay the, away from the alligators. Well, the attacks are rare. They're not, yeah, they're not going to come after you. Yes. One million. If your baby is going into the water in the middle of the night, or like right at sundown, you better be careful because that Disney, you know, shocking event that happened uh, not too long ago, that can happen. Floridians usually know that, but that was very rare. Um, yeah, they said there's an average of 10 uh, yeah. attacks a year. And then just know Documented. in your local area, the venomous snakes and every other snake is fine. They're actually good to have around. They are rat control, rat Very and mouse true. control. So. so that was our fun little side story. Well, um, if you have experiences with alligators or birds, let us know. Um, or wild snakes. turkeys or, or peacocks. Wild. If you have snake ones, don't be posting pictures. I don't do snakes. <laughs> um, <laughs> but if you're thinking about getting into real estate and you have questions or uh, you are in real estate and have questions about switching, uh, you can email us at join at buysalrebel.com and we would be happy to have a conversation with you about how to get into it, how to start, or how to grow your business if you're already in real estate. Um, um, and if you want to be social and still practice social distancing, you can visit our Facebook page at Buy, Sell, Rebel, or our Instagram at Buy, Sell, Rebel, or TikTok for our fun videos at Buy, Sell, Rebel, GNV, or you can email us for our other social events, info at buysellrebel.com. Did you know we have a blog? We do, and we post all kinds of fun articles, information, um, events, anything you can think of, tips, and I believe we just posted the homestead exemption uh, information. So if you are a person that purchased in the last year and you need to file for homestead, make sure you check us out at buysellrebel.com slash blog. And we want to thank the Fiesta Media for our production of this podcast. And if you would like to get into podcasts, contact Fiesta Media, LEO, at 352-327-5089. Thank you. Thank and we'll you. See you next week, <laughs> Monday at two on Facebook. We'll be on YouTube and Periscope. See Thanks ya. so much. See you. <laughs>